Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We've come together today to remember with love and appreciation the life of Sue Ann Jacobs, who left us on Wednesday, May 11, 2021. My name is Frank Savello, and as a civil celebrant, I have been asked to lead this ceremony today. I'm sure that everyone here today, whatever your own beliefs, will agree that we should do our very best to live a good life and to support others to do so. These are values we all share as human beings. So people of all faiths and those of none are welcome here today. In the course of the ceremony, we will hear stories from Sue Ann's life, some poetry, some music, and there'll be a time for reflection when you can remember Sue Ann in your own way or in terms of your own faith. Sue Ann's family are of course experiencing a huge sense of loss. They draw some comfort though from the presence of all of you who have come today to say your farewells. It is much appreciated that you are here. On behalf of John, Betty, Peter and Janet, let me first thank you all who are here today out of love and support for Sue Ann and her family. Your presence and your kindness and prayers have sustained the family. They're humbled in speaking to so many of you in reading the text messages Sue Ann is still receiving and in seeing the many postings on Facebook we've learned even more than we knew before how widely and deeply Sue Ann was loved. Of course, she was loved deeply for 20 years. Therefore, in the past few days, everyone has asked over and over again, why? Why would Sue Ann, so tender-hearted and sensitive and gifted and so deeply loved, why would she be, in the end, so terrified of life? Those who knew Sue Ann well know that if she were here, she would jump in right now to lighten the moment for us. Proudly sporting her South Park t-shirt, she would either quote Homer Simpson or utter one of her wonderful Sue Anisms. Then she would say, enough with the philosophizing, just tell a story. And she would be right. Whether we are comfortable with it or not, we're left with the mysteriousness of life. The answers we are looking for are ultimately known only by our God. Sue Ann was a wonderful and precious gift from God to John and Betty and Peter and Janet. And now some thoughts on life and death. We all know that in order for there to be life, there must be death. Death is the one certainty in our lives. It comes to all of us and we should not fear it. Nevertheless, it's always overwhelmingly sad and shocking when someone dies suddenly, as Sue Ann did. It's right and natural that you should grieve because your sorrow is a measure of your love and affection for her. Though you'll always miss Sue Ann, you'll always have fond memories too, which you will take into the future, and that will give her a kind of immortality. Even when a life is cut short, and had its difficulties, we can still celebrate it. As you remember Sue Ann's life today, perhaps you'll feel able to smile at memories of the good times, even while you grieve her loss. So let's now sit back and listen to words being delivered by some of Sue Ann's closest friends as they pay tribute to her. Now I'd like to invite Jasmine to the lectern, who is going to share some of her memories of Sue Ann. Sue Ann was born on the 17th of May, 2001, the daughter of John and Betty. Sue Ann was the middle of three children, Peter being the elder brother and Jeanette the younger sister. The family lived in Coburg when the young, older two children were born, but moved to Fitzroy just before Janet's birth and that's where the children grew up. It was a happy childhood with a little black dog called, dog called Rex, a psycho cat called Pepsi who attacked dogs and family holidays at Bonnie Doon. Peter remembers them playing together with Lego and Thunderbirds 
and Jeanette remembers Sue Ann attacking her Cindy's with her Barbies. Sue Ann made lots of friends at school and the house was always full of them, particularly when there was footy on the telly. All of them crammed onto the settee with their glasses of cordial. Christmas was a big thing for the family and after a few sherries, John would have everyone crying with laughter. Thank you, Jasmine. And now I'd like to welcome Sienna to the lectern. When Sue Ann was very small, she found a live crayfish making its way down the footpath in front of her house and escaping from a neighbor's crayfish boil. Rather than return the crayfish to its imminent death, she insisted that Betty drive her and the crayfish six blocks to the local creek. She wanted life for that crayfish. Soon after that, she brought home her first pet, Harriet the Hermit Crab, rescued from the beach at Portsea. Graduating from crustacean, she then rescued turtles. She had brownie one, brownie two, and then greeny. Sue Ann had a unique and spare way with words. Her favorite soft toy was called simply friend. There was nothing Sue Ann looked forward to more than the week long family holidays at Bunny Doon each summer. Her absolute greatest joy was being at dawn or dusk, waist deep in the lake, walking the shore, whipping her fly rod in touch with the quiet life of the water and trees and fish, and an occasional crocodile. It was at Bonnie Doon, in the cramped sleeping arrangements at the exciting meals and in the long after dinner conversations that she learned family history and the love of her grandparents, Shirley and Mac, and felt the love of her three uncles, Tom, David and Pete, and their beautiful families. Fishing and family, Sue Ann loved Bonnie Doon. Sue Ann carried her love of nature and fishing into her Girl Guides project, serving as a camp counsellor for children with muscular dystrophy. What began as a required service project, she continued for four more years as an act of love. Sue Ann had a fierce desire to make a positive difference in kids' lives. She helped a boy in an electric wheelchair land his first fish by hooking a line with bread and tying it to the boy's wheelchair. What had seemed impossible for that child, Sue Ann made possible. It would have been hard to tell who was the prouder, who was prouder of that fish. Thank you, Sienna. And now please make welcome to the lectern, Josh. I'm going to try to explain a little about Sue Ann as a friend. I've talked to the others and searched through stories. I've tried to gather a few Sue Ann-isms that we can remember her by. For example, she would make little raps when the conversation lulled. She would say gerb or gerbil a lot. She would say, I got that cupcake, waddy. She would say gobble gobble a lot. She would quote never ending story a lot. Most of all, snur Lurgan. Thank you, Josh. Please let's welcome Pina to the lectern. Beyond the Sue Annisms, I've also tried to think of what Sue Ann would want said here. What she would like us to walk away with. First, learn how to fish. It brought her so much happiness. I'm sure we can find some in it too. Second, share what you know with kids. Brighten their days. Give them the courage to push forward to weather the storms. Teach them to be responsible men and women. Most of all, listen to them. They will make you smile when you least expect it. Some people think Sue Ann would have been a great mother or aunt. Well, forget that. She was a great mother for so many kids in so many ways. Third, if you ever miss her or someone else, write them a letter. Just get it all down on paper. Then you can rest a bit. It was one of the first things she ever told me to do and we've been friends ever since. Must have been good advice. Thank you, Pina. Please make welcome to the lectern, Craig. Fourth, listen to Johnny Cash, the empire of the sun soundtrack and tool. I think you'll understand her a bit more that way. Fifth, find the stupidity, <clears throat> the irony, and mostly the hilarity of life. 
If Sue Ann was good at anything, it was that. She could take a drab, dark, philosophical topic and cut it straight to the core. She could summarise the whole thing in one phrase and make it funny. You have to be of a certain brilliance to do what she did. Finally, she would say perspective is everything. She knew there was happiness in the world. She tried in so many ways to change her perspective, to find that happiness and to enjoy it. <clears throat> Call it the downside of brilliance or just bad body chemistry, whatever it was, she struggled for so long to find that happiness. We owe it to her to find it, to be joyful every day. Thank you very much, Craig. And now let's welcome to the lectern, Carmel. But if you ever want to hang out with her, you still can. Find a place where the water meets the shore. She'll be there, probably fishing and willing to listen to everything you have to say. Like a good friend, like a good sister. What more in these final moments can we say about our wonderful friend who made us proud every day? These stories show us she was immensely caring, tender-hearted, generous, a loving daughter and sister and a faithful friend to so many. To Sue Ann, who now lies in this casket, we say again, we love you. Your mum, dad, Peter and Janet love you. God loves you. All of us love you. We wish you had found a way to love yourself as much as all of us here today love you. I don't want to end these moments with our, with our words, but with some of Sue Ann's. She was a very fine poet. I want to read a short poem she wrote about her happiest times fishing with her uncles at Donny Boone. Early Rises. There were only four up at this hour, me, Uncle Dave, Uncle Pete and the son and the sun was running late. Waist deep and entwined in fly line, I watched their ancient motor shove the rented skiff to the far side, where the big ones roam, or so the theory goes. When the air got thick, they turned back towards smoked bacon and cheese grits with only jokes and grime to show, and we sipped chicory coffee together. I laughed with dad and his brothers about ant piles and stocks, and family, while quietly we all thought about the ones that get away. A very big thank you to Carmel and to everyone who shared their wonderful memories of Sue Ann. Thank you to everyone who participated in sharing their memories of Sue Ann with us all. And now I'd like to call to the lectern Sue Ann's sister, Janet, who will also share some of her fondest memories. Sue Ann loved music and we just couldn't fit in everything that was suggested for this funeral. One of the songs that didn't quite make it was Linkin Park's One More Light and we'd already decided to include the lyrics before we found out that the band's lead singer Chester Bennington's life also ended abruptly a few months ago. Clearly, there's a lot of understanding behind these words. Should have stayed, were there signs I ignored? Can I help you not to hurt anymore? We saw brilliance when the world was asleep. There are things that we can have, but we can't keep. If they say, who cares if one more light goes out in a sky of a million stars? Who cares when someone's time runs out, if a moment is all we are? Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I do. The reminders pull the floor from your feet. In the kitchen, one more chair than you need. Oh, and you're angry and you should be. It's not fair. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I do. Thank you, Janet, for those wonderful words. And now, everyone, we are going to pause for a short while to reflect on Sue Ann in our own way. And during this reflection, you're going to hear one of Sue Ann's favourite Blondie songs, Dreaming.
dearest family and treasured friends, we now reach the part of the ceremony where we say goodbye to Sue Ann. First, I'm going to read a short poem called We Can't Judge, which says a lot about a person who died before their time. We cannot judge a biography by its length, nor by the number of pages in it. We must judge it by the richness of its contents. Sometimes those unfinished among the most poignant. We cannot judge a song by its duration, nor by the number of its notes. We must judge it by the way it touches and lifts our souls. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most beautiful. And when something has enriched your life and when its melody lingers on in your heart, is it finished or is it endless? We've been remembering with sadness and with love the life of Sue Ann. She's now beyond harm and so in this last, last rite, in sorrow, rather than fear, we commit her body back to the elements from which she came. Sue Ann, we feel privileged that you lived. We grieve that you are no longer with us, but we know that you will live on in our hearts, our lives and memories of those who knew and loved you. We took delight in your friendship and the good times we shared. We sorrowed at the difficulties that you faced. We remember with gratitude your character and all your qualities. And now with love, we leave you in peace. And with respect, we bid you farewell. Sue Ann is now at peace. She saw, heard and felt what others did not and could not. She was different. May you, her family and friends, build on the pain of separation to strengthen each other, to face the ongoing tasks of life with courage and with love for each other and remembrance of the goodness and happy hours you shared with her. As we end our ceremony today, I hope you have gained some comfort from being here together. As you return to your work, your homes, your routine of your daily lives, remember how you felt sharing these moments. Take away with you your own memories of Sue Ann and her place in your lives. <coughs> in our relationships and friendships, in the work of our hands and minds, and by example, some essence of us remains. So Sue Ann will always be part of your lives and in remembering her, you will be paying her the greatest tribute. The family would like me to thank you once again for being here today, to support them and to remember Sue Ann. You're all invited to join them in the adjoining room for the wake. Take care of yourselves and of each other. Let's leave now to one of Sue Ann's favorite songs, Yes Sir, I Can Boogie.